Hello, welcome to the Friday, December 14th, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Washington, D.C. Today, numerous organizations reported that they received email bomb threats that asked for Bitcoin ransom. Now, all of these emails appear to come from the same source. They're very similar in their wording, if not identical. They all mention a very specific chemical for the bomb, but that chemical actually changes from email to email, and they all ask for exactly $20,000 worth of ransom to be paid in Bitcoin. The Bitcoin addresses appear to differ, however, from email to email. So overall, this looks very much like fake bomb threats. And I don't think, at least as far as I can tell from the samples that I have received, that anybody has paid the ransom yet. However, it has caused some disruption based on the fact that organizations typically have fairly strict protocols in how to deal with bomb threats and to take bomb threats seriously. Of course, it's difficult to tell why these emails were sent. The obvious reason would be just uh, to make money with the ransom. And it's possible that a couple of organizations paid the ransom, but bomb threats are often being executed in order to disrupt the target organizations, knowing that there's typically some form of ev evacuation of buildings happening and such, which of course uh, can take a while until the bomb threat itself is resolved. If you have any samples of these emails, please forward them to us. We received a couple, but uh, not really a large number. And it appears that these emails are at least somewhat targeted. So not every organization is receiving them, but uh, only fairly selected target group of organizations appears to be receiving them. Over the next days, I also expect others to jump on the bandwagon and to see various variations of these emails. Now, how you react, of course, is up to your organization. I would probably not consider these valid bomb threats if they're executed via email, if they ask for Bitcoin ransom, it's unlikely that they actually placed a real bomb in your organization. Now in the past, various terrorist organizations did use bomb threats and did announce them in order to just cause disruption. The IRA was pretty famous for doing so, but they had a fairly specific code how these bomb threats were made in order to authenticate the threats and to know whether or not it should be taken serious. If you are receiving one of those bomb threats, I would definitely recommend that you contact law enforcement and preserve the email, including all headers or various logs that may be useful in tracing the source of that email. And Xavier looked today well into another email thread. This one is phishing off Office 365 accounts. And the new trick being used here is that the phishing email is disguised as a non-delivery notice from Outlook 365. If you're using Outlook 365, you've probably seen these uh, fairly graphic, elaborate uh, non-delivery notices that you receive from Outlook 365. Now, these fake ones uh, do pretty well emulate uh, these messages, but they also offer a button to send the email again, which the originals don't. Now, if you click the button, you're then being redirected to the Outlook 365 lookalike page. And of course, if you're logging in, your credentials are being crapped. It also looks like they are actually trying to validate whatever credentials you're entering. Most phishing sites, uh, they take whatever credentials you enter. In this case, there is some JavaScript code that suggests that the credentials that you enter are actually being submitted to Outlook via the website that you're submitting it to, and then you'll receive a message back whether or not the credentials were valid. Of course, one common technique some people are using in order to recognize phishing sites is that if they are going to a phishing site or suspect it's a phishing site, that they first enter fake credentials. And if it's a phishing site, it often will acknowledge them as correct. So that way you know that it's a phishing site. But in this particular case, is, well, you enter the fake credentials, then you get the error message back that the credentials weren't right. So a victim may suspect that this site is actually
actually a legitimate Outlook 365 site. I've also seen this actually done a little bit more simple where the phishing site will always at the first attempt reject the credentials and then ask the user to enter them again. If the user thought they were entering the right credentials first, of course, they'll just enter the same credentials again, kind of confirming to the attacker that the username and password was entered correctly. And Malwarebytes is reporting about a new family of Mac OS malware that, well, for its lack of features, uh, Malwarebytes calls it Lamepire. This uh, malware appears to arrive as a disguised Discord application. Discord is a messaging system very popular with uh, gamers and such, but uh, this particular application doesn't even attempt to sort of emulate Discord, or it's not that they modified like the original uh, Discord uh, binary in order to sneak in uh, their own component. Instead, it's really just an uh, automator script that launches Python. And uh, this Python script will then take periodic screenshots and send them to a command and control server. So really not much to it. It should be kind of obvious uh, that it is malware or not the official Discord app. Not sure how many of these copies were downloaded or if there's any kind of numbers on an infection rate. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.